Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm back to talk about another uh, interesting mystery that I just read, and that is Whose Body by Dorothy Sayers. It's the first mystery in the Lord Peter Whimsey series. Um, the second one I've ever read, I actually also have read Strong Poison at one point. Now, Dorothy Sayers is considered one of the great British novelists of the golden age of detective mystery. Um, I think Lord Peter Whimsey is her most um, famous character. Um, I'm not, actually not sure what else she wrote, um, but she's considered one of the best uh, of, the, of her time. And I think many writers following her have been influenced by her writing style and the way that she uh, developed her characters. Now, this book is titled Whose Body? And the central question in this book is uh, exactly what you might guess from the title. Um, it's actually quite an interesting setup. Uh, there's a gentleman who lives with his elderly mother, and he goes into the bathroom to take a shower one morning. Lo and behold, there is a dead body in his shower wearing absolutely nothing except a pair of pince-nez, if I pronounce that correctly, or eyeglasses. And try as they may, the local detective force, as well as the main character and investigator, Lord Peter Whimsey, are unable to figure out whose body this is. They've asked around in place reports, and they've even asked at the local hospital uh, whether a body went missing from there, and there's been no success. Now, at the same time, a middle-aged businessman has disappeared from his London flat um, without any sign of where he's gone. To make matters stranger, his appearance superficially resembles that of the body found in the bathtub, um, but there are enough obvious discrepancies that it's clear no detective would actually conclude them to be the same person, except, of course, the bumbling local um, inspector who, of course, arrests the guy who found the body immediately. And Lord Peter is luckily on the job with his assistants to figure out who really did this murder. And I'll say a bit more about the investigation. I'm not going to give any spoilers in this video, um, but I will say I was happy with the way that the investigation progressed. Um, I thought the mystery was interesting, and I was satisfied with how it all wrapped up as well. Now, since most of the Golden Age uh, detective mysteries that I've read have been from Agatha Christie, specifically um, the Poirot series, it was definitely interesting to see a different author from the same time period to see how she writes uh, similarly and differently from Agatha Christie in developing her novels. And there were a few things that I noticed that stood out about um, Dorothy Sayers' writing. One, one thing I noticed was in comparison with the Poirot mysteries, this mystery placed less emphasis on a big reveal at the end of the book. Um, so in a, in a Poirot novel, I've definitely come to expect that everything in the novel itself is establishing clues, laying out testimony, and pretty much gathering all the pieces for a mystery that I'm going to try as hard as I can to figure out, but basically everything is building up to this solution at the end. And it's often very surprising, uh, like sometimes too surprising even, but when it's done the best, it basically just astonishes me and makes me feel like, wow, that works perfectly. I should have seen that, but of course I didn't see it because it's just it's just too clever. And that final scene gives you most of the satisfaction of the novel, I would say. And everything else is kind of the anticipation of that final moment. In the Lord Peter Whimsey mystery, um, Whose Body, I found that is a little bit different because I thought, unlike the Barrow mysteries, where Barrow kind of tends to keep everything to himself, and he'll point out things um, just to kind of mess with the reader and the other people listening to him, but like you don't get a sense that you really know what he's thinking. In this novel, Lord Peter Whimsey and Bunter and Parker, like you actually hear what their thought processes are. In general, as I, I was following along, I found myself sort of finding clues along the way. And usually after giving me a few minutes to think about the clue and gathering the evidence, um, Peter would talk with you know his butler, Bunter, or the um, police inspector, Parker, who actually is a pretty competent police inspector as they go for detective novels, and just kind of talk over what the clues were that he had figured out so far. I think one aspect of that that also made this really interesting was it allowed um, the detectives to go a little bit deeper in uh, what they were talking about and what they were theorizing about. Like at one point in the story, and this is not a spoiler or anything, but they're trying to investigate who a particular suspect is and why his glasses 
uh, were left on the body. And more importantly, like if these were his glasses, could he really be the murderer? Because why would he have left his glasses on the body? And more so, like, why would he have reclaimed them at that point? But it's really interesting because Lord Peter um, pretty much lays out, like, he lays out, you know, we have two different scenarios, one and two. And then you can break scenario one down into A and B. And scenario two, you can break down into A, B, and C. And there's actually a few ways that scenario B could happen. So, like, it could be because of this person was involved, or it could be that like a different person was involved. And uh, like at that part, it, it almost felt a little bit too deep at that part. But since it happened just that one time, I thought it was perfect, like seeing sort of the systematic, like, I thought this is great because every reader is going to have their own suspicions, um, like their own ideas they came up with. And I, I had come up with a few possibilities. Um, but I certainly had not come up with all of those possibilities. And it was like impressive and also sort of like a little pat on the back to me for like the the ideas that I had come up with um, and had, had gotten right that um, Peter then included. And this sort of uh, process of investigation is present throughout the book. So Peter's butler, Bunter, is an amazing character and really a detective in his own right. Um, he's as much an investigator in this story as Peter himself. And he is uh, a photography enthusiast. Um, so he helps Peter out by collecting fingerprints from different pieces of evidence and the discussion of like how he gathered them and you know where he had found them and how these pieces of evidence could fit together um, it definitely works really nicely another part of this story that i found really interesting was that there definitely were false leads and there were also leads that were inconclusive like at one point they talk about how long this body must have been dead and they go through this kind of funny dialogue where uh, basically, they're consulting the medical evidence and expertise and um, just reading out how the amount of time until rigor mortis sets in could be anywhere from like two hours to like three days, uh, depending on variables and you know, just listing all the variables that they have in this book. And I really enjoyed that because I feel like often in detective novels, we come to expect clues as definitively telling us one thing. But sometimes there's like a little bit of uncertainty. And sometimes the fact is, oh, that's pretty good evidence, but, but it's really not conclusive enough that you could actually like convict someone on it. Another standout aspect of this novel was the characters. I really enjoyed meeting the kind of eccentric aristocrat, uh, Lord Peter Whimsey. But even more than that, I enjoyed meeting Parker, uh, Peter's friend on the police force who kind of likes to work with him on cases. And in contrast to some of the murder mysteries I've read where the police force is kind of just this bungling group of doofuses who really just interfere with the case. In this case, we have one interfering detective, but this other police inspector, Parker, is really a um, sympathetic guy. And he talks through the case with Lord Peter and they kind of make fun of the other uh, inspector, Inspector Sugg, who's like just kind of, um, they characterize him as someone who would pretty much arrest anyone as long as he could have like someone to pin the crime on. So we get a little bit of the classic bungling police force, but we also get a more sympathetic police character. And probably my favorite character of all is uh, Bunter, the butler. Um, Bunter is, as I said, a detective in his own right. He definitely takes on more of an assistant role in some of these cases. Um, there's kind of a fun scene where he basically like goes and talks with all the other servants at the other households, like the household where a crime was suspected to be committed. Uh, Bunter goes and talks with the maid and the valet and just like basically talks trash about their masters and talks trash about Peter to like gain sympathy with them. And then they, you know, he's a very friendly guy, so they become close. Um, at one point, he he gives a little bit of Peter's uh, finest brandy to to some of these servants uh, and invites them over while, while Peter's away to kind of just enjoy the evening on on Peter's dime and Peter's of course uh, totally okay with this um, so it, it's it's a fun dynamic between all of them now I guess it's worth mentioning um, you know a couple a couple of critical comments I saw of this book online um, you know some people said that they thought that this book was racist and some people also said that this book was uh, elitist. And these are questions worth uh, considering. Is this book racist or elitist um, or both? And I can see why many people um, might feel that this book is racist because there are um, there are definitely racist characters in the book. 
In particular, there are um, some anti-Semitic characters in the book. The main characters, of course, uh, do not express such views. Lord Peter's mother, the Duchess, who is also kind of an amazing character in herself, she does have one dialogue where she, let's say she expresses a lot of misinformed opinions, um, but I wouldn't go as far as to say um, she expresses racist opinions. I would say she expresses opinions about um, Jewish people and Jewish customs that are, I think the reader is supposed to understand them in a satirical sort of way. Um, like she would hate being Jewish because she d doesn't get to eat bacon ever. It's just kind of like, uh, it definitely doesn't really show any understanding of what it actually means to be uh, Jewish. And likewise, there are, uh, there are several Christian characters in the book who, you know, at times are very upstanding characters and at times are um, a little bit questionable in how the uh, Christianity informs their views. And I think that the fact that there is racism present in the book um, a racism that is reflective of the times. Um, I don't think that that means that the book itself is racist because I don't think that Dorothy Sayers was trying to um, condone these um, attitudes. I think she was just trying to paint a realistic story. And, and the fact was that people had and, and have uh, stereotypes. Um, and she showed this in this book. And I don't really think that she would have been better off pretending like this aspect of society didn't exist. I thought she handled it in, in a reasonable way. That said, I can understand why um, even a book that contains racism, whether the author is uh, intentionally being racist or not, is maybe something that is not going to be comfortable for everyone to read. So that is something worth paying attention to as you consider whether to read this book. So another question you could ask is, is this book elitist? I would say not really either, uh, but I do think you could say that it is a little bit elitist. Um, certainly the main character is a British lord, uh, nobility, an aristocrat, and he's portrayed as a bit of an anomaly among the aristocrats. Certainly there are uh, other characters who are kind of painted in a more satirical way. Um, so in some ways it can be a little bit tongue-in-cheek at times about the aristocracy. Um, for example, at one point there's a rich uh, um, American railroad mogul who kind of just, without even uh, verifying what he's doing, um, just, you know, writes a check for a thousand dollars to a donation um, to a charity that actually doesn't even exist and that Peter just made up on the spot to uh, try to get information out of him. Lord Peter Whimsey is not necessarily portrayed as characteristic of all aristocracy, but it is certainly true that he is painted in a positive light. Also, the way that um, Lord Peter Whimsey interacts with his butler, Bunter, is exemplary, and some uh, could rightly argue that this might be um, oversimplifying the relationship between a master and butler. Um, uh, certainly not all domestic servants had as high of an opinion of their um, masters. Uh, and maybe this book paints a little bit too rosy of a picture of how the domestic servants were treated. And from what we see of, in Bunter's interactions and uh, pseudo interrogations of other domestic servants and other households, um, we don't get the sense that every domestic servant is like completely happy with everything about their situation. They certainly have grievances. Um, so I think this book is fairly honest in that sense, uh, even if it is, um, you know, looking at a segment of society that is more upper class and portraying them in a, a positive light. So for a variety of reasons that I kind of just walked through, I think that this was a really good book. I enjoyed it a lot. I gave it four out of five stars, and it was refreshing to see a different take on the detective story. Uh, naturally, it's still a British golden age writer, so there's certainly a lot more out there for me to explore, but it was still a refreshing new style and a new character, and I would definitely be interested in reading more about the Lord Peter Whimsey mysteries in the future. Um, from what I've briefly seen of some of the other mysteries in this series, this style is pretty representative of uh, Dorothy Sayers' Lord Peter Whimsey mysteries in general, so I think it's a good one to give a try first if you're looking to get into this series. And if you've read this mystery or others in the series of, of the Lord Peter Whimsey mysteries, uh, definitely let me know what you thought and leave a comment. I'm really interested to hear how you all enjoyed this mystery. Uh, thanks for watching and happy reading.